Hi, my name is Bill Moran. Thank you for watching. In recent days, we've watched as the country has descended into some sort of strange form of chaos that many of us couldn't really have imagined not that long ago. There have been protests in Texas, Minnesota, Virginia, Michigan, and throughout the country of people screaming, fire Fauci, um, open up the country, um, and just generally protesting the quarantine or social distancing or whatever it is that's going up, whatever word you would use to describe the current state of affairs in this country. And, you know, a lot of people in the media are mocking or chiding these people, right? Like, you know, oh, these idiots, they, they call them COVID idiots, right? These are poor people. These are poor people who, you know, they... They're not getting any of the stimulus, right? They're not getting any money. They're being asked to live for 10 weeks, maybe more, on $1,200. They lost their jobs. They lost their insurance. And, of course, they were upset. But how did we get here, right? So just yesterday, we had 32,500 coronavirus cases. I think that's the highest day that we've had so far. The total death toll is now 40,000. When I spoke with everybody last week, the death toll was only 20,000. So that number is actually escalating. It's escalating rather quickly. It's doubled in the past week. The number of cases hasn't doubled in the past week, but it's increasing still rather fast. Um, so very serious situation on our hands still. Um, we're nowhere near what should be like an ideal situation to open the country back up. But that hasn't stopped one person, Donald Trump. Now, I have a theory on this. Just go along with me for a while. So Donald Trump is a gambler. Right? And you might remember he had casinos in Atlantic City. Right? And you know how they say the house always wins? Right? He's not even a good gambler. Right? He's a pretty bad gambler. The house lost there. He went bankrupt. He went bust. Um... But, you know, we don't have March Madness now. We don't have sports. There's nothing to bet on. Except for every day, there's one number that every American watches. Right? It was at John Hopkins University um, screen that, you know, shows the number in red. And it's got the little bar chart that's, line chart that's going up, 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 up. Right? Number of cases. Number of deaths. And so I'm thinking, you know. He can't do any over and under bets on March Madness. So is he taking an over and under bet on coronavirus? On coronavirus deaths in the United States? By his actions, you would actually think that's what he's doing. Right? So let's just step back for a moment and imagine that you're Pete Rose, right? In fact, let's go live into Pete Rose. All right, Pete Rose is on the phone. Yes, Cooperstown. Oh, this is the secretary. Yeah, I would like to speak with a manager. Yeah. You know how you kicked me out of the Hall of Fame? Right? You kicked me out of the Hall of Fame for what? Betting on a game that I'm playing in, right? Do you see what the President of the United States is doing? Oh, yeah. You've been watching the news, huh? Well, at least I never bet against my own team. Click. All right? That's what's got to be happening. In a cynical form of way. And I don't think Trump actually, you know, wants extra people to die. I just think he doesn't care if they die, right? Liberate, right? Went to went to the map. Liberate Virginia, he said. Liberate Minnesota. Liberate Michigan. Michigan, the state that has like the third or fourth most cases in the country. Liberate Michigan, right? A state that doesn't have water, so people can clean their hands to prevent the spread of disease, or clean water in a lot of places. In the state, liberate Michigan? No. Mm -mm. He's got the overbet. That's my guess, right? But anyhow, there have been protesters across the country, Texas, and my state of Maryland, um, all over the place, right? Saying, open up the economy. And some of these people have kind of funny signs, right? There's the one that's got the the sign of like a face mask. And it says Trump 2020, and it says, I'll do with my body what I want to do, right? Which is like, 
exactly what everybody who's pro-choice has been saying for forever, right? So that's kind of nuts. Or there's a whole bunch of modern-day Patrick Henrys who are like, give me liberty or give me death. You know, there's kind of a problem here, right? Patrick Henry didn't say, give me liberty and or death. He said liberty or death, right? You get one or the other, right? If you're trying to do this in the middle of a pandemic, you have at least some negative, unpleasant odds of getting both, right? There's tons of people who are gathering at these events too, right? These aren't even small events. You look at the videos, a few thousand people all bunched up with their kids, the whole works, flags. And it's easy to laugh at these people, right? Oh my God, look at these people. They're what the media is calling them, COVIDians, right? Oh, look at these dumb unwashed masses. They're not idiots, right? What they're doing is wrong. What their conclusion is about how to solve their plight is wrong. But as they say on the streets, the struggle is real, right? The struggle is real. Those people, if they even got their stimulus checks, pretty much everybody that I know didn't get a stimulus check. I got one. I, I, I managed to get mine, right? Most people didn't um, that I know, right? But that's what, $1,200, $1,200, right? And for how long is that supposed to cover you? From mid-March, when we started to shut things down, until the end of May, according to Steve Mnuchin, right? Steve Mnuchin said, oh yeah, this is going to cover people through the end of May. $1,200. How? Right? So, like, I'm in Maryland, and just, I'm not even in a particularly nice part of Maryland. And to have an apartment that's just big enough to fit my, like, two-year-old's toys costs about $2,100, right? Jordan and Jenna are in New York. I can't even imagine how expensive it is there, right? $1,200 for two and a half months? Is this like 1940? Are you kidding me? Right? That doesn't even cover a quarter or a half a month's rent once you also factor in groceries, insurance, etc. Right? How are people supposed to live off that? And the answer is they're not, right? People have been given no choice. You see these people protesting. And, you know, they don't know who to be upset at. But they, they are right to be upset. And then we look at all of the other congressional fixes, right? The other big program that was supposed to fix things was um, the CARES Act. Big provision in the CARES Act. The Payroll Protection Program. We talked about this on the last show, right? They put a loophole in the payroll protection program. What was that le loophole? The definition of small businesses. And this has actually come out in the news since since we did this pod did that last podcast. Hedge funds, <laughs> a small business, right? Um, publicly traded companies, subsidiaries, small businesses. Um, big billion dollar franchises like McDonald's and Century Twenty One. Small businesses, right? So those companies took all the money that was intended for, you know, what, your local mom and pop shop, a local coffee shop, you know, the people that you see every day, right? They didn't get it. They did not get that money. They're applying and applying and applying and on the phone constantly. I know a whole bunch of people. One guy that I know, a gym owner, right? I think he's applied and reapplied and reapplied and reapplied. He spends half his day calling the Small Business Association. He he didn't get it. He didn't get money. I don't think he's going to. Right? So of course people are upset. Right? They got you know, they got ripped off. They got ripped off and they're upset and they need to feed their kids and they need to feed their families. Right? But we look in the media and they're getting laughed at, right? Which only pushes them towards Trump more, right? They're getting laughed at. Well, who's laughing at them? The same people liking and retweeting and saying, hey, great taste, Nancy, and Nancy Pelosi, in your ice cream, in your $22,000 refrigerator, your $100 ice cream, right? That's more money than these people might make in the entire year, right? But we gonna, we're going to sit here and we're going to laugh at those people and say, oh, look at these covid -ians. Oh, they're going to die, or somebody in that crowd's going to die. It's not funny. It's not funny. Right? So what Trump is doing is 
insanely tragic. And I think to a certain extent, in a cynical way, it's intentional. He knows that they have, you know, very little hope in this sort of situation, being out of work for weeks or months. So he can falsely claim, hey guys, I'm with you. They're handcuffing me. Right? They're, I hope they do handcuff him one day. Right? But, you know, my hands are tied. Right? I can't do too much. Right? I have Dr. Fauci. Maybe, if, maybe you can help me get him fired. Dr. Burks. I can't do too much. But liberate the country. It's up to you. Right? In the meantime, what's going to happen, really? What's going to happen in the real world? The number of cases increased 32,500 yesterday. I, I think that's the highest increase that we've seen so far, right? The curve isn't flattened. The curve's going up, maybe going up a little bit less, but it's going up at, it's at a very fast rate. You open everything up, the number of cases is going gonna, is gonna to what? You're going to double. It's going to triple. Before you know it, what are we going to be doing? Locking down again. What? For a longer period of time. It doesn't make any sense. Trump knows that this doesn't make any sense. His advisors know it doesn't make any sense. You know, the liberal media scolds, right? Those folks know it doesn't make any sense. And they're, and they're right in their general position. But those folk, the people on the ground who are suffering, they get laughed at by one group. And they get told that they're special by... You know, the same people ripping them off, same people who are, like Trump, ripping them off, putting their, their lives and their families in danger. But who do they go to? That. So that is the situation in this country. That's what's going on, right? So there were protests in front of the Minnesota governor's house. I couldn't even believe that. Right? They're circling around his house, saying, open up, open up the economy. In Texas, in my state of Maryland, um, in Virginia, where else? In, in Michigan, right? Michigan. And where people, huge at-risk population, right? If you've been following Jordan's coverage of the Flint water crisis, I hope you have been. It's really top-shelf reporting. And if you've been following that coverage, you know, right? A lot of people have pre-existing conditions after the Flint water crisis. The worst thing in the world, and, and a lot of people in the Detroit area, as well as in Flint, Michigan, you know, don't have running water either because the utilities shut off their water because the price got too high, or the water's just, you know, not clean, or not as clean as it should be, or even if it is clean, right? And there's some people who say, oh, well, now, it, now it's clean. It might not have been clean before, but now it's clean, right? Some people have that position. People there still, you know, have very legitimate concerns that their water's not clean, right? So what's the one way to prevent this from spreading the most? Washing your hands, right? Washing your hands. How do you wash your hands under those circumstances? I mean, no water, no clean water, or water you think is going to get you sick, right? That's a huge concern, right? Trump wants to liberate Michigan, right? It's sad, but that's the world. Uh, I thank you for following and getting depressed with me about the state of affairs in this country right now. Um, wish I had more to say. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.